Hello everyone, peace of the Lord Jesus Christ with everyone. You know, we hear Muslims, sometimes they say to us that Islam is a good religion and Islam teach peace. And even you might hear in, in, in YouTube a video about somebody saying Islam, like one of the verses saying, if the, your enemy go for peace, you go, you go for peace too. You know, we need to understand when Muslims go for peace. Muslims always, they have conditions so they can go for peace. They, they, they just, you know, they cannot just go for peace. If your enemy go for peace, only if you are weaker and they are stronger, which means if you cannot make it to fight them, which means if you fight them, if you fought them, they will destroy you. Then you can go for peace. <clears throat> now this is Surah 35, sorry Surah 47 verse number 35 be not weary and faint hatred crying for peace be not you see it when you should be the uppermost of Allah with you and he will never put you in lose for your good deeds so, as long your hand is uppermost, as long you are the one who is making victory, you don't go for peace. As long you are the one who is stronger, you don't go for peace. Peace only a solution. Like now you see Egypt did sign a peace agreement with Israel. Why? Because Egypt is a lot more weaker. So according to Islam, they can give a fatwa for the president so he can go for peace. But this peace not forever. This is a temporary peace until the Muslims, they get ready again to strike. Until they are strong. As long as they are not strong, they should not do it. Because if they do it, we, we know it will happen to them what happened in the year 1967 when they lost Jerusalem. So, okay, we go for peace, but not for peace really. It's a peace until we are ready again. So we shake hands with you to fool you until we are ready again because it's forbidden in Islam to have a peace with the enemy of Allah as a peace as forever. But a peace just temporary until we get ready again, for sure we can do that. And this is a surah and we will see the explanation. Now as usual, you know, we will not explain the Quran up to us. We will explain to the Quran up to the Muslims just to show you that you know Quran is really an evil book don't go for peace as long you are the one is a powerful like if America is a, is a Muslim country and uh, which mean America is the most powerful country America as a Muslim country should destroy all the world before we have a peace again because uh, you know peace then is going to be after you destroy your enemy which means no enemy left this is what peace in Islam mean no peace until you destroy all the enemy because you are you are the one who have the upper hand now this is Ibn Kathir let us go to Ibn Kathir and see what Ibn Kathir explained the verse <coughs> he said the God said don't go for peace which means don't go in weakness of peace in front of uh, uh, the enemies and don't call for peace even by you know taking a break or going for real peace when you have a war between you and an enemy a kuffar and by the way the, the enemy in Islam is the kuffar just because you are an unbeliever you are an enemy as long you are the one who is the strongest and you are the have more numbers of fighters and soldiers because at that time it's very important to have more numbers and of soldiers right not like now so as long you have those you have the strength and you have the uh, you know the most uh, the higher number of fighters as soldiers why you want to go for peace and you have your own better weapon from them this is why he said as Abdi Kathir saying this is why he said don't go for peace as long you are the upper hand in any case as long you are the one is upper hand so Muslims when they fool you saying to you Islam is a peaceful religion Quran says 
go for peace if your enemy go for peace you know go for peace if your enemy go for peace if your enemy is a stronger like it is saying Israel now have a war with the Muslims if Israel say I wanna go for peace and Israel is a stronger you go for peace because this is a temporary peace because anyway you cannot make it it's for your best if you say yes we wanna go for peace it's for your best so it's just a tactic you do until you have the upper hand again so you strike again so in Islam a Muslim cannot have a peace with the kuffar the infidels the enemy of Allah no way they are enemies forever and you are in war with them forever this is why the Islam divided the land the land of peace and the land of war what 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 is the land of war the land of war is the land of kuffar not because they are fighting you know as long they don't obey the law of Allah and the Quran they are in war with Allah and because they are in war with, with Allah it's mean they are in war with all the Muslims so war in Islam it's a must with everyone he is not a believer in Islam if you go to surah, 5, surah 9 verse 29 it says goes and fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last, day, last days or what forbidden by the Prophet Muhammad from those people who've been given the books which mean the Christian and the Jew until they pay the jizya or they convert to Islam so you have one of two choices either you pay the money jizya mean you give your country you give your land they rule you you will become a second or third hand citizen and on top of that you have to pay jizya as a penalty if you don't do that you know you have another choice convert to Islam if you don't want to convert to Islam you will be killed this is the peace in Islam so when somebody try to fool you with the peace of Islam and you know what show me your fruit I will tell you who you are the peace of Islam right show me your fruit I will tell you who you are you know I'm not talking about the fruit of Osama bin Laden I'm talking about Muhammad himself Muhammad when he killed thousands of people when he killed 900 Jew and he took their women's and their kids for no reason the Muslims will, will say to you, to you they break their, their treaty with, with him this is a lie the Jewish were not a part of any war at, at, at there what about the Christians why Muhammad he killed all the Christians in Mecca and Medina where are they what happened to them he killed them why did the Christian fought Muhammad ever know when Muhammad he sent the three letters to the king of the uh, 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 the Caesar Caesar and the king of Iran and the king of Ethiopia the biggest of three kings at, at, at his time saying to them I gave you three days either you convert to Islam or I'm going to attack you did they attack him ever no the Iranian never attacked Muhammad never you know none of those kings ever been in Mecca none of those kings have ever a soldier in Mecca so why Muhammad is attacking them the Muslims will say to you no if you attack us we will attack you this is a lie did the Chinese attack Muhammad did the Indian in India attack Muhammad they, they never been there did the Spanish attack the Muslims did the France the Muslims spread their army all over in Europe they occupy Spain they almost have half of China half of India Pakistan now this is this is part of India and you know all those Asian countries Iran Iraq Syria Jordan Egypt did the Egyptian ever attack Muhammad never <laughs> so it's very clear Islam when the Muslims say to you Islam mean peace this is a lie first Islam doesn't mean peace the word in Arabic peace it's mean Salam not Islam Islam it's mean you submit yourself you are surrounded you know they will say submit to God no submit yourself to Muhammad you know you put your weapon down this is what Islam mean Aslim Taslam the Prophet of Islam he said Aslim Taslam I will talk about that too this is hadith of Sahih Muslim, sorry Sahih al-Bukhari, the book of Al-Iman, hadith number 24. Chapter, if they repent and they do salah and they do zakah, then let them go. He said, I've been ordered from God to fight and kill everybody until they do the salah, they do the prayer, and they pay me the money. If they do that, then they will stop in me from shading their blood and taking their money 
Is that the prophet of peace? You see? If they do that, they will stop me from shedding their blood, not because they are fighting me. If they do the Salat, they start praying as a Muslim, which means they accept Islam. And they pay me the money, which they call the Zakat. The Zakat is for Muhammad. They say to you, for Allah. Muhammad, he started that to, to, to way, as a way to generate money from Muslims for him. So, if you do that, he's forcing people to do pray in Islamic way and to pay him money and then I will stop shedding their blood and stealing their money. This is the Prophet of Peace, peace upon him. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Wake up. Muhammad is a mafia guy big time. Thank you. Peace of the Lord with everyone.